Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Quan Choice Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'd like to say a very warm welcome to you. Dear friends, it is Sunday and this afternoon I am sharing with you how to make this delicious goat's meat light soup and fufu from scratch. This is no pound fufu but it comes out so perfect and I know you are going to enjoy trying to make this. Come along with me and see how I did this. So for this I'm going to be using these ingredients right here and as always I will be listing everything for you in the description box. So to start off I'm going to cut up my ginger. Ginger in your food, especially on your raw meat, I always say it, it's just amazing. It's a typical Ghanaian way of cooking meat. So I have a little bit of peeled ginger cut up into the blender it goes. I'm also going to cut up one large onion and add it to this. And these two is what I'm going, and some garlic is what I'm going to use to season our meat. I would like to introduce some heat right away to my meat so I'm going to add my two peppers right away blend it with the onion and ginger and that will go straight onto the meat so before I blend I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetables that I'll be using to make the soup ready as you can see I have some carrots and some squash in here as well yes it's my good way of trying to sneak in some vegetables into the soup so my kids will eat and they were none the wiser when this was done so two large carrots is what i have already peeled i've cut it up into the pot it went with my half an onion and my tomatoes i'm also going to cut up my squash and this i learned from you right here my beautiful family yes i really read all your comments and i am thankful to be here to share and learn from you i've done this several times uh, without making a video and it is so good to use your squash in your soup and I thought to share it with you here as well for those who don't know so I've added enough water to help boil this and I'm going to cover and bring this to a boil and whilst that is cooking I'll focus on blending my ingredients to go on the meat So I'm also going to add this pureed garlic to my meat. This is just blended and I freeze. So I freeze them in portions. So I just took one portion of that onto my meat. I've added my blended ingredients, rinsed out my blender. Of course, the lid has a lot and I'm not going to let that be all that flavor. Mm -mm. Go in there. And I'm going to now add in some salt. And of course, this is always according to your taste. So here in this pot, I have a little bit of every piece of uh, goat's meat in here so that can tell you that this soup can be assured to end up huge very very huge on flavor mm -mm, we're not kidding here and i'm just going to stir it up to make sure that our marinade and our salt gets coated on every part of it and then we'll start cooking this so about 15 minutes into the cooking time i check on my meat it is smelling amazing it is doing great just look at that we have a lot more liquid pulled from our meat into our pot so yes it is cooking in its own juices at this point i just tasted a little bit for salt it is perfectly salted and normally when i make my soup and stews i try to put as much of my salt onto the meat and this way you know the stock is well seasoned the meat is well seasoned and pretty much you tend not to need to add any more salt when everything is cooked probably a little bit but once your meat is well seasoned you know that whatever you're cooking is going to end up perfect so i've covered it again checking on my uh, vegetables now and they're doing amazing beautifully cooked you can see the tomato has already shed its skin it's over almost coming off and that shows it's perfectly cooked the carrot is cooked perfectly it is not too soft but of course once we blend it it is going to end up in the soup and continue its cooking process you don't want to overcook your vegetables anyway so i turn this off and i'm going to go ahead and bring this over and we can start blending so i'm going to transfer everything here into the blender Now 
yes we are going to throw just a little bit of the rainbow here in our soup for sure this ended up so good i really hope you're able to incorporate more vegetables in your soup and if there are any other tricky ways that you know please share with me so i can do it for my picky little ones okay thank you so much family and yes when i said i'm going to put everything in the pot in the blender i meant everything so the stock goes in here as well and that is the liquid i'm going to use to blend my ingredients cover and blend this So once it's done blending, I'm just going to go ahead and straight away add this to my meat, which has cooked now for about 20 minutes and let everything cook together. So rinse out the blender, of course, and add it in here. Just look at the beautiful color of our soup base already. I have in this little container about a teaspoon of tomato paste to this I'm going to add some water and pour into my soup and this is just going to help bring a little bit of redness into it you don't necessarily need to add tomato paste you can just make it just as it is and it's still going to end up perfect so I'm going to cover my pot all the way to allow my soup to boil over just like it's doing at this point and now I'm just going to vent it and let our soup cook on the lowest setting until it thickens and our meat softens up after cooking on low heat for about 30 minutes this is how reduced our soup has become it is almost thickened to how I like it it smells amazing just amazing and of course you can be assured that this is just going to be perfectly delicious it tastes amazing this soup is just delicious and the aromas uh, you just need to try this recipe and i've just thrown in here some fresh green peppers for us later on of course the typical Ghanaian way of doing things and i'm just going to let it simmer down a little bit more and whilst that is going on we are going to start making our fufu from scratch yes uh-huh no pound fufu mm. so normally i just like to use cassava frozen cassava and uh, the goya brand is what i typically buy i don't like to have any surprises with my fresh cassava which is hard to find anywhere where i live but normally when you find it sometimes it's a hit or miss you peel it and then you find out it is not good it has too many sticks or strings in it or it is just rusty and I don't want any dreaming cassava okay I don't want any bunch so frozen cassava always works for me for my family of four we normally use just the bag of the cassava and two to three um, fingers of plantain depending on their size but we have company so I've added about uh, half of the contents of one bag to that and it's still a little frozen so I'm letting it sit in the water whilst I peel my plantain so for the one and a half bags of course I'm using the four fingers of plantain and plantain for fufu you don't need to scrape it when you're done peeling I'm just trying to get the bits of the skin that is still sitting on the plantain and once once that is done I'm just cutting it up straight into my blender so no scraping your fufu plantain okay that is only when you are making it into a pc you scrape it so a person so nice it will have its beautiful skin showing and it will be popping for you to eat as a pc but when you are making fufu no yeah in very red back board yeah no so anyway all my four fingers of plantain is in the blender now i am trying to remove the strings in the frozen cassava that is my only thing that I don't like about the frozen cassava because then it's hard for you to get the strings out as well you know it's too soft for you to normally use a knife so you just pull it like that and then I just try to uh, break it into pieces and into the blender it goes so I'm going to continue this process until I have all my cassava in the blender 
So once you have all your cassava and plantain in the blender, you add some water. This is just enough water to help your blender to propel. You don't want it to be too watery or runny because then you won't get that perfect fufu texture. We want this to end up looking like we boiled cassava and pounded it in the uh, mortar using a pestle. So you need a powerful blender to use this method of making fufu from scratch. But I have other methods and I hope to bring them along to you as well so i'm going to keep blending until this is into a very smooth silky texture which i've already achieved at this point so i'm going to go ahead and pour this into a pot very thick as you can see you want it to be as thick as you what you can get it because then you can regulate the texture of your fufu so now i'm rinsing it out i'm rinsing out my blender with about another half cup of water in total so i did about a third and then i i added just a little bit to make sure that the blender you know you you want as much of your blended paste out of the blender as you can and so I set that on the side. I'm going to start cooking it in a minute, but I came to check on our soup first. I've turned off the range because it is perfectly cooked at this point. It has thickened. It's just perfect at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover this and then we'll start making our fufu. And yes, Sunday afternoon lunch could never be this better. You know, you know that already, right? Sunday fufu dear and wow anyway so I have my fufu here now on the stove and this you are going to prepare just like you would prepare banku so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep stirring until it thickens and once it thickens and then we'll do the actual driving <laughs> As we say, I don't know who said, oh, come for fun, because I saw. And that is coming to this point now. It start off with almost some, a little bit of lump. And then once it is that texture, you want to just keep um, stirring it this way. So you bring it to the edges of the pot, just so you get some friction to make sure that whatever lump or anything that will be in is removed. And this is how you are going to prepare it until you get your desired textured fufu so i thought it was a little bit too thick for me so i added just a little bit of water and anyway adding just that little bit of water helps for the the steam you know so the water will generate some steam and that helps the fufu to cook through so i'm scraping the sides of my pot at this point and then i'll cover it and let the steam help the fufu to cook through so this i covered for about three minutes and so it was on the very lowest setting and now our fufu is almost done just imagine my friend here who was visiting she is just amazed that you can make fufu using this method so this is straight up natural ingredients you know exactly what is in your fufu and of course the texture is perfect so you can see that for yourself i'm just going to let this cook for a little bit more so about two more minutes and then i'll transfer it into my asanka which is my earthenware pot or my apotoyua you want the asanka or apotoyua to have a little bit of water it should be wet because this fufu is soft hot and so it will stick even with the moisture you see it is sticking a little bit into the asanka and so uh, you want it to have a little bit of water for you to be able to shape it easily So if you have a tapoli, you can use that to pound just like I'm doing that helps to uh, Work like you're using a mortar and pestle to shape your fufu. So That is done now uh, fufu. I think it's a good shape now So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it in, in, in the asanka So the bottom side is the presentation side of your fufu and it is up now but I like to serve it in our little bowl. So transfer it into a bowl and I'll reshape it. And that is it. This is what we call hazel free Sunday afternoon fufu. And just like that, lunch is served. I know, I wish I could have you here to join the family, but I really hope you try this recipe or these recipes I have to say. This is so good and I know you will like it. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Kindly give me a thumb up and please share this video. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Kwan Chua and sharing simple, replicable family meals is my passion and I hope this convinces you to stay. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy.